you guys. Um, so today I'm going to be working on a dough bowl. I've been seeing these dough bowls for the last year or two and I've always really wanted to make one. Um, they kind of look like this and I think I'm going to give it a try. I had some leftover alder and I think I'm going to make it out of some alder. So I'm going to take the two pieces that I've got here. It's knotty alder and I'm going to laminate them together and then I'm going to carve out the bowl. And I'm gonna do my best to do this with minimal tools so it's for beginners and to still make it look pretty. So, stick around. <laughs> Okay, so I normally use Type Bond, and this is Type Bond 2, and I have Type Bond Original. I really like both of them. This one's water resistant, so I think I'm actually going to opt for this one and laminate them together real quick. Okay, so you just want to cover one side of your boards with glue. I used a paint scraper to spread it all out. You want to make sure it's nicely covered, and then you want to clamp them all together. Each of these boards are about 23 inches long and about six and a half inches wide, and you can make yours however long or wide you want. I waited about 48 hours before removing the clamps, just because I had other projects going on, but 24 hours would be plenty. To create the angled base, I grabbed my table saw bench, pulled it out, and I moved the blade to 45 degrees, and then I ripped each side of the base all the way around to create kind of a diamond shape and my kids are always popping in and out while I'm working. <laughs> I ripped this 45 degree angle on all four sides of the base. Next I suited up because I knew this would be very messy. I grabbed my angle grinder and some clamps and got everything ready to go. Now there were a couple different options for grinding out the center of this dough bowl and Gator Finishing was nice enough to help me figure out which of their products would work the best. They sent me out a four and a half inch flap disc that um, was a 36 grit and it was the heavy duty one, this one here. And it really did the job as far as grinding out the center of this dough bowl. They also had a 60 grit, an 80 grit, and a 120. So I took out my angle grinder and I started with a 36 grit. I just want to add really quickly to make sure you have ear, eye, and mouth protection before you do this. It is very messy, there's a lot of dust, and you want to protect yourself. I'll link my safety gear below that I use in this video. I have one of my extension cords mounted to the ceiling to avoid hazardous falls and having cords on the floor. I will link my garage hacks video here above if you're interested in some of those. Now I took a pencil and I drew out the general outline of how I wanted this dough bowl to look and where I wanted to grind everything out. This was just a general idea. It didn't need to be perfect. I was just trying to give my eyes a place to watch for as I was grinding out material. Next I took my angle grinder and got to work. So obviously I'm just taking off a little bit of material with each pass, but the entire bowl took me about 45 minutes to carve out total, which isn't as bad as I had anticipated. I know that there are some other angle grinding bits that you can get that have carbide teeth and might take off a little more material at a time, but this worked really great. You can get these gator finishing pads at your local Lowe's. 
as well as on Amazon, so they're just a little more accessible and a little less expensive. I'll make sure and put a link below to the products that I use in this video, so if you're interested, you can go there and hit the link. Okay, so I knew that with an angle grinder, I wasn't gonna get a very precise circle or shape on the inside, but that's kind of what I was going for. Dough bowls look like they're hand carved or sanded or grated out, and those little imperfections really add to the appearance of the dough bowl in the end. Okay, so once I just about hit the depth that I wanted for the bowl, I switched out my flap disc to the 60 grit just to try and start to smooth things out but still gain a little bit more depth. Make sure you unplug your angle grinder before you change out your discs. Just safety first. Okay, this is where I think I hit the depth that I really liked and wanted. I felt like I was going a little over halfway into the laminated space and I was happy with this. Make sure you blow out your space. It will be a mess, you guys. This put off so much material. But that's one of the things I love about this mobile table saw base. I can move it out of the way and get everything cleaned up. Next, it's time to sand. I started with 120 and took it all around the base and inside as much as I could. Um, because of the curvature of the inside of the bowl, I needed to hand sand. So I got these gator sponges and took to all the curves and corners that I could and hand sanded it up to about 120 as well. So next I pop the grain with a little bit of water and the idea behind this is you spritz the piece with water and little pieces of the grain that are not quite sanded down will soak up the water and stand up. Once it's dry you can then sand down those pieces again and you'll end up with a really solidly smooth piece. So I let that dry and then sanded to 220 and got it ready for finish. So for the finish I used this Watco Butcher Block Oil. It is food safe and really easy to put on and it brings out the natural grain in this piece. I love it. And that's it, it's all done. I am so happy with how this turned out, you guys. It's beautiful. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, drop them below. I'll get right back to you. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all at Eternal Harvest Home Decor.